Hey, I'm Mike, and welcome to Retro Boost. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to help me grow the channel. We recently hit over 500 subscribers on the channel. It's a big deal, and I'm so grateful for it. Let's keep the growth coming. Today, we're going to be taking another look at the Retrobit Prism component cables. These came out back in April of this year. I was very excited for the launch of this product when they came out, because I always wanted to try component output from GameCube. I've been using Wii up until that point, which is great, but I always wanted to taste the the original power of what the GameCube itself could do, but it was kind of hard to do that like legit with component cables because the original factory ones were so expensive and hard to find, and I really didn't see any other companies making their own versions. Super Nintendo, Genesis, consoles like that seemed to get all the attention for component situations in that regard. But then, here they come. The Retrobit Prism cables came out, they retail for 60 bucks, so they are pricey, but they're not anywhere near as pricey as trying to find the original cables online secondhand, at the time going for $300 plus, had they performed. Pretty good. I was satisfied with them. A lot of first impression reviews at the time rang the same tune. Everyone liked them. They did what they were supposed to do. They give you progressive output from the GameCube. There was some initial problems though. For whatever reason, the flavor of picture, the colors, produced a much darker image, at least when using like the RetroTink 2X Pro and 2X Pro M when compared to what Composite was doing or S-Video as well. The 5X Pro didn't seem to have as much of that problem as the 2X Pro and 2X Pro M did, but it's still interesting. It was a darker overall color experience compared to the compared to not using them on what came before, <laughs> just using Composite, or Wii on Component for that matter, so that was interesting. But something else popped up since post-launch, and that was that the audio channels are actually swapped. That is a really weird thing to go wrong when constructing cables. So. I normally try to have a, a sense of jovial optimism when I talk about stuff like this. I like to, I like to, you know, deliver the classic butt sandwich where you, you give, you give good, you give some bad, you give some good. I, I, it's, positivity is a big thing. But I will say, for sixty bucks, for the audio channels to be mixed up, left is right, right is left. That's that's kind of bad. <laughs> so it's an easy enough thing to fix. We just swap the inputs on whatever device you're doing, but that's that's kind of ridiculous that that kind of mistake flew through. I'm not sure if that's for all of them or if it's just for some, but it's definitely the case for mine. A helpful comment pointed out that some people were experiencing that. That kind of got me on guard. Sure enough, playing Luigi's Mansion for Retro Boost Arcade, listening to that footage back, yeah, it's totally swapped. You can you can definitely tell. Okay, so we've kind of re reviewed the darker color situation, we've seen the audio problem, so what's next? Well, as I said at the beginning, I think this cable still is good, uh, but what I want to do now is a comparison between this and the Wii. This is something I alluded to at the end of my original Retrobit Prism component cable video where I talked about, hey, progressive content like 480p and above is pretty good level of quality and like whether or not you have retro tink products like a regular TV, it's gonna look good. So now what I really want to do is just, just for the sake of comparison, like to do on this chair so much, is compare the Retrobit Prism component cable to HD Retrovisions component cables on the Wii. Because the Wii, at least nowadays, may debatably be an easier way to play GameCube. It's not as expensive generally to get a Wii aftermarket as it is a GameCube. 
games themselves aside, the hardware is probably a little more easy to find and deal with. Plus, there's all kinds of, you know, the, the whole uh, modding scene for the Wii and using, like, homebrew, stuff like that. So it's a popular console to play GameCube on, that's for sure. And that was the main way to play it that I was utilizing before getting these cables. Because if you get a Wii and you get a component cable for the Wii, you get the same benefits of output quality that this cable brings you for the original hardware. So let's let's check it out. Let's compare the GameCube running the RetroBit Prism component cables and the Wii running the HD RetroVision component cables and see what each one looks like, what each experience looks like. So if you didn't own one or the other and you were curious about it or, or you were curious which way to go, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. We'll compare it using the 2X Pro and the 5X Pro, the two main models that are available right now. I'm not going to do the 2X Pro M since you can't buy them anymore. I don't think it'd be fair to show off a thing that people can't get anymore. Uh, I would refer you back to my original video if you wanted to see its performance. There's plenty of examples of it in that video. Uh, and then, as a bonus, we'll also use my StarTech uh, analog capture card, which takes component in with a breakout cable. And that can kind of be a way to simulate what, like, a normal 1080p television would give you uh, if you were to hook the cables directly into it. Because that's all that capture card really does, is just straight up convert that component signal into a digital 1080p signal. It's not doing anything particularly special to it like the RetroTink products do, line doubling first, or adding significant amount of post-processing like the 5X Pro can do, stuff like that. So let's take a look at all that. We'll do the uh, 2X Pro uh, first and then recount our findings.
So comparing the 2X Pro, this would have required running the Wii in 480i output since the 2X Pro cannot accept a 480p input into itself. Running on the smooth filter for both for both examples using component cabling for each one. Uh, what do we notice? Well. The color and the brightness is the most obvious thing. The Wii version pops so much more, but just the same that it's brighter, it's also darker too for its dark content. So we got bright content like Super Mario Sunshine, and I felt like to balance that out we should do dark demos as well. Did the same thing for the original video using Metroid Prime 2. This time, Luigi's Mansion, since it's so topical right now, uh, for whatever reason in my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the 2X Pro, uh, 2X Pro Wii on Luigi's Mansion was darker as well. So it was darker, but like in a good way. Like it was delivering a far more uh, creepy, kind of inkier, dark delivery. And it wasn't like... The problem isn't that the uh, RGB settings are wrong or need to be adjusted. I checked that. Changing the RGB washed it out, like, in a bad way. So, it's interesting how different they were for each version. But overall, I'd say that the Wii version is the more appealing one to look at. The colors are brighter and more vivid, and the dark content is darker and more shadowy. It's, it's, it's giving you more of a dark haunted house is kind of the point of what I'm trying to flubber over saying here. Uh, so that's interesting. I would give the point to the HD Retrovision here for this example. Uh, they're both fine. If it was all you had in front of you, I think you'd be satisfied. But side by side, I think the HD Retrovision cabling for the Wii output is more satisfying. So now let's jump up to the 5X Pro. We're gonna do two uh, types of demos here, 1080p demos and 2560 demos. Uh, Cause the 5X Pro isn't limited to just 1080p output anymore. A lot has changed in the firmware since a long time ago. Um, 2560 by 1440 is a very optimal output mode for a lot of different consoles to use and they can they can benefit quite from it in, in a lot of people's opinions mine too uh, I hadn't really considered using 2560 before until I came across some good examples of it uh, from the videos about the 5x pro settings from the YouTube channel wobbling pixels very helpful content that I referenced in my 5x pro settings videos so since then I've been kind of experimenting with it on various consoles and I think GameCube is one that benefits from it. So let's do these same demos again, but now using the 5X Pro, we'll do 1080p on GameCube and Wii, uh, putting the uh, 5X Pro, and then we'll do 2560, uh, again, GameCube and Wii, outputting to the 5X Pro. So let's try it out this time.
Okay, this one was much closer than the 2x Pro demos were, and I was kind of expecting that. Uh, once again, the color is probably the most obvious difference, although it's a little closer. I don't think it was as dramatic as the 2x Pro demos were, but still definitely there. Uh, but there were some other little things I noticed. Uh, I feel like what popped out to me more was the edges of certain things. Uh, being a little better on the Wii version, but that might have just been the angle, I don't know, but 
really trying to put my magnifying glass on. I feel like in the Sunshine demos in Noki Bay, the edges of the platform that we're standing on are a little better on the Wii version. Uh, similarly, looking at the HUD, I feel like the edges of the life counter are also a little bit better. So maybe the edges, uh, the way that it attacks, uh, what do you want to call that? The surfaces are less jagged, have less noticeable points on them. Um, it's, again, the word would be interesting. It's interesting to dissect the stuff when you look at it like this. Uh, but again, if it was all you had in front of you, it's going to look good. Uh, but just looking for things there, I noticed those upon my further review of the uh, footage. But again, the most noticeable thing is the color. It pops a lot more on the Wii version. However, the darks are much closer on both. Luigi's Mansion, those dark scenes are almost completely equal. Whereas on the 2X Pro, there was a difference in the T Wii version having darker darks, uh, deeper darks, inkier blacks, all those dark terms I keep repeating myself like a broken record. Uh, so the 5X Pro does a great job with either cable source, but I feel like the Wii is still giving the more pleasant color to look at, along with other smaller details, like how the edges are a little better in certain spots. It's interesting. Uh, now, let's take a look at the Star Tech situation. So again, this is going to kind of simulate just like straight up going into a TV, no dedicated enhancement happening beforehand. Just kind of straight analog digital conversion, nothing really special happening. Uh, all the same capture settings as far as color space and, and resolution goes. We're doing 1080p capture and everything like that. So let's see. Let's do the uh, Star Tech capture now. Tech in summation, probably even closer than the 5X Pro was, although the same 
differences in sharpness are somewhat visible, which leads me to think that it's probably the angle of the camera that's doing that. Looking at the HUD, they seem kind of equal across both, so maybe I was just looking for too much uh, in the 5X demo, but what definitely maintains is the color differences yet again. However, we have something new to look at. The darks. This is where I'm now realizing that I think the quality of dark detail is definitely best on the 5X Pro or like the Sartek capture card versus the 2X Pro situation. The Wii 2X Pro in comparison to what the 5X Pro and the Sartek capture card did might be too dark. Although more atmospheric looking, I guess, than the GameCube uh, cables were for the 2X Pro. Clearly the 5X Pro and the StarTech capture card are giving us a better level of dark detail for Luigi's Mansion than the 2X Pro did on the Wii. So that's interesting too. Uh, however, the color, we still get those better, more satisfying, bright colors on the Wii component cables, yet again on the StarTech capture card. So, interesting. I'm glad I looked at all this because now I'm really realizing that the 5X Pro is a beautiful device that continues to impress. <laughs> Worth the investment, definitely. Uh, so, awesome. Another look at the prism cables. Putting them up against the HD Retro Vision for the Wii. What are we thinking here? Well, if Wii is what you got and you love GameCube games, what probably makes the most sense is just trying out the HD Retro Vision component cables, or just regular component cables for that matter. Although the HD Retro Vision ones are shielded, component in and of itself is quite good. I'm sure the shielding will help a little bit depending on your situation, but I wouldn't say that it's like completely necessary to have that feature specifically. They're already outputting a strong, capable signal, uh, it's it's still going to be really good. Shielding will definitely help. The higher end construction is nice and all, but uh, probably not totally required at this level of video output. It would probably help a significantly weaker signal like what composite and stuff like that does. Uh, anyway, uh, to rub it back in, it's probably the better investment to get into the Wii side of things. It'll definitely be more cost effective than going down this route. I mean, the cable's half the cost for better color performance, so that's definitely worth throwing out there. If the GameCube was all you had, you're probably better off trying S-Video first and see how you like that. But if you make the investment, these cables are good. Like, it, that, that part of it hasn't changed for me. They do what they're supposed to do. They just don't do it perfectly. There's some room for improvement there. Their color output is darker than what you would think they do. And they screwed up the audio and flipped it. And although that's easy to fix, it's just, it just kind of sucks and is like dumb that I have to talk about that and like go like, oh really dude? Like come on. Like it's, it's just kind of a weird bummer thing to mess up. It's just one of those like little errors that you wouldn't see happening for something that costs the price that this thing costs. That's why it's so disappointing. But I still maintain that they are good. They do what they're supposed to do and they do it quite well. As far as alternatives go, as I've shown here, I think the Wii as an alternative is a great alternative and debatably produces the better experience. It's still all opinion. If you like those deeper colors, more power to you. Then run with it, take it, enjoy it, love it. Uh, side by side, we can see the differences. It's interesting. Another alternative for the GameCube as well are devices like Carby, those HDMI adapters that jack into the ports on the television. Carby is more expensive than this cable is in itself, but is cheaper than going down the route of buying devices like RetroTank or things like that. So, another consideration to have there. I have plenty of demonstrations of Carby and uh, these cables as well. The best one to refer to would be my virtual console comparison video. You get a lot of uh, performance situations of like Carby, the 2X Pro, the 2X Pro M, 5X Pro, etc. That was a crazy comparison video. Uh, but, awesome. Hope that this was informative and showed you some interesting things about how these uh, cables and consoles perform with these various games. Hope it was helpful. If it was, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching regardless, and I'll see you all on the next one.